Hey, Boaz here from Next Pittsburgh. I'm here at the Vandergriff facility where they have been making steel for over 150 years. But recently, ATI has turned it into this super fancy modern facility, and I'm going to find out how it all works. I'm here with Mike here, who's the project engineer. And so this has been a big project that you've been working on for four years. Yes, um, you know, through the whole development, it took us a couple of iterations really to figure out what we needed. And parts of this building are well over 100 years. You were pointing out some of the, like in the ceiling, you can still see some of the old wood beams and there's still some old structures on the side here. Yeah, yeah. So this, this facility, ATI acquired it from U.S. Steel in the early 90s. Once, at the time, Allegheny Ludlam bought the facility, uh, they transformed it to be more of a commodity stainless shop for us. What does that mean, commodity stainless? Your silverware, your refrigerator door, and maybe the lining within your dishwasher, right? Those kinds of what we consider commodity grades. And so as part of our build out here with the Bright Anneal, we wanted to do more high-tech alloy. Fancy stuff. Fancy stuff. The titaniums, the zirconiums, the nickel alloys, things that are aerospace. So Jordan, you're sort of responsible for looking over this plant, right? Yes, this operation, correct. And so, can you tell me, like, what we're seeing? Like, I see some things spinning around behind us. Yeah. Like, what material are you starting with at the beginning of this process? Um, it's a piece of cold rolled steel, so it comes off of a mill, which rolls it to a certain gauge, which is thickness. Okay. And then, at that point, it's hard. It's like, it's like taking a hammer to a piece of steel and making it hard, like you're sword making. Um, we run it through here. And when it goes through our furnace, it anneals. And by annealing, that's basically just heating it up and re relaxes the grains. It softens it. So this is what you start with, right? Yeah. So this coil would have just come from one of our Z-mills. We take coils of various thicknesses, and we put them on the Z-mill. And the Z-mill is a reversing mill that goes back and forth. And we squeeze the metal down on each pass as we go back and forth. And it's on this giant, like, three-inch metal spool, which I can only imagine weighs a couple tons. It, it's pretty heavy, yeah. And yeah. then you put it onto that machine. We can see there's one already on there spinning. Yeah. So this so will be the next one. You can see that, yeah, this will be the next one. As the coil gets a final pass on the mill, we put paper in so that there's no scratching. It's sort of like how in between those slices of American cheese, you have a little piece of paper. Yeah, exactly, right? And so we collect that paper, and it gets recycled. And, and so then that coil will go up through the machine. Maybe we've got to bring Christine in. So what kind of things are you doing with these materials that you need to do this complicated process? Uh, aerospace applications, uh, jet engine components, landing gear, um, helicopters. So like, like on a Delta flight or something, there could be some of your steel in there? Exactly. Um, it's, our, our material can stand high temperatures. It can be corrosion resistant. So have you like sent this stuff into space? Yeah, actually. Uh, so yeah, it goes into space as well. What other stuff does ATI do? So we are from a mount shop all the way to finishing. So you, you start with a, a molten big ingot. Um, you roll it down into a coil at our hot rolling process facility. And here in Vandergrift, we finish the coils. We roll it down to a certain thickness depending on what the customer requires, and we ship it to customers. What this machine does is as we feed the strip forward, the automation allows us to align the two coils, put them together very precisely, make a shear cut so that we have a nice clean edge, then position them exactly next to each other, and those copper wheels then go across that strip and do a resistance weld on it. And so these pieces must be so long. They must be like thousands of feet long. They can be. Some, some of our coils are over a mile long. What do you, like who needs a mile of coil? Like Chris, like who's ordering a mile of coil from you? Yeah, so for our oil and gas customers, they prefer really large coils because they can keep their tubing operations um, continuously operating. They'll make like a mile long tube that doesn't need as many seams, sort of. Right, exactly. And you're dealing with crazy temperatures here as well, right? Yeah, well, it's one of the hottest furnaces uh, in the world. We're annealing around 2,200 degrees. But we have a little bit of headwind above that. You could probably, like, bake chocolate chip cookies in, like, half a second. Yeah, yeah. It, it heats fast, yes. Yep. People have been making steel in Pittsburgh for so long. Tom, yeah. It's wild that now you're doing it in such a different way. Well, 
I think some of these processes have been around. It's the automation, right? When, the more that you automate, the more you take the variable out of the process. And therefore, you increase your quality because your, your variables are going away. We send the strip into this accumulator. It's a series of loops that we're able to expand and contract so that as we need time, that accumulation gives us the time. Whenever we start to make a weld, yeah. we need time. So we have that accumulator nice and full and we stop the entry end, we make the weld, and at that time that accumulator will come down and allow us to feed the strip at a steady state into the furnace. Because whenever it comes to annealing, it's time and temperature, and you want to be very exact about it. It goes all the way to the top of that furnace, and if you can see way up at the top, it's what we call the top turn box. We come back down and we return out of the furnace right there. And so inside the furnace, is, is the steel doing this back and forth thing also? No. All the way up, over the top, and then returns back. And we rewind it here. And then you put it on another, like on another spool, sort yeah, of. Yeah, exactly. And we so this is here. like the exit. This is the exit, yeah. We can handle up to a 50,000 pound coil. 50,000. Can yeah. that even go in a truck? How do you transport something like so, that? So, special trucks, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we can, that's that's sort of the limit, yeah. right? It does put you to the limit. And so how many people like are on the floor on any given day like making sure everything goes smoothly? Um in term well, I'm obviously out here making sure everything's going smoothly too, but right now we have uh three operators out on the line during this commissioning time. Um they check the entry, the exit, and then one guy is like the overall, I guess commander, you could say he's watching all the computers, making sure the temperatures are right and everything. And then there's also a driver who gets the materials. So total team right now is four. Well, Mike, Christine, Jordan, thanks so much for the tour. And now next time I'm on a plane or when I'm going out to Mars on my flight, I'm going to be thinking of you and the, and the beautiful work that you're doing here. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for touring our facility. We're really happy that you were able to spend the afternoon with us.